year Daytona 500 winner Matt Kenseth. Kenseth trying for two in a row. Now Daryl, he leads Jeff Gordon by half. There is Katie on the pit box. And the gap has not grown not grown smaller with 22 laps to go is it time or is it too soon for Jeff Gordon to be worrying too much about the deficit this is exactly of the last time we went green after a caution the 17 shot out to a pretty comfortable lead but then the 24 over the long run the longer they went the closer he got and the better he got and that seems to be what's going to happen here yeah last time by Jeff Gordon beat Matt Kenseth by almost three tenths of a second that last lap Two drivers who are both past champions of drivers of whom won race last year. Two drivers who have been dominant pretty much in these first two races. Well, this is the best the best race I've seen Jeff Gordon run in quite some time. From start to finish. I've seen him fade at different times in races, but today he's been right all day long. Now he finished 13th in the Daytona 500 but was up in the lead pack most all day until the rains came after winning his qualifying race on Thursday. This battle here will not go away between Carl Edwards in the 99, Jimmy Johnson in the 48. That's a battle for six. I'm sure those guys would love to get up to the top five before this thing's over with 21 laps to go. What Matt Kenseth needs to do, although leading this race, is not look back. Just keep hammer down, hammer down. Don't worry about where Jeff Gordon is. Matt has a tendency to start worrying about where somebody is late in these races. I saw Jeff Gordon spin him out at uh, Chicago, I think, a couple of years ago. And, uh, and Matt just needs to forget about Jeff Gordon and drive his own race and drive hard. Boy, Gordon gets off a of turn two so good. He has all night long. They always told me when you're looking back, you're losing time. That lap, Jeff Gordon cut Kansas lead in half. Yeah, I believe he's coming. Well, he's going to put it. Uh, he's going to go down on the apron and drive right up under him. Looks like that's what his plan is. And we're getting a report that Matt Kenseth has complained about his car getting loose, which means he can't put the throttle down and get off the corner. That's where Gordon has the advantage. Kind of tip for tat here. They look like they both get through this end pretty good, but the other ends where Jeff is better. Jeff drops that thing down on the apron in uh, three and four, and Matt can't stop him. In 1992, Jeff Gordon was the California kid. He has since won four championships in this series, but he is trying to rebound from a winless 08. I mean, he's trying every groove there is right now around this two-mile racetrack. And, and the, the thing about this car is it takes a lot of discipline to drive yeah. this car. If you overdrive it, you get anxious, drive in too hard, get back in the gas too quickly, you lose time. Got to time your every move in this car just right. Now Kyle Busch is third. He is four seconds behind running all by himself and called into his crew and says, I don't know what to do. Can't go forward, can't go <laughs> no, back. No, no, no. He hadn't been behind anybody for two days. He doesn't <laughs> know what to do. Definitely That's a true. different position for him this weekend. And his teammate Danny Hamlin now fourth. Kurt Busch now fifth. Still with 16 cars on the lead lap. 18 laps to go. There's the two crew chiefs, Steve Latart on the left, Drew Blickensdurfer going for his second win in a row on the right. I believe that Jeff Gordon has the best car, Larry. I believe he's better than Matt, but he can't get in a position to get by him. And I think when he gets outside of him like that, or the air off of uh, Matt's car is taking the front grip away from the 24 and he can't make the pass. That Chief Steve Latart told Jeff during cautions. You've got the best car here out on the racetrack. Go get him. They change now. Matt's down on the bottom, and uh, and Jeff tries the high line. Let's see how they come off turn four here and see how that works out. About the same. <laughs> not much difference. I mean, their lap times are not varying from each other. 85, 41.85 to a 41.84. But, but boy, that lap there, Matt Kenseth really pulled away from Jeff Gordon. Yeah, he brought that lead back up to six tenths of a second, the most it's been in ten or so laps. Well, here's what you want to do if you're leading this race. At some point, and this might be the point, you want to tell Jeff Gordon you can give up. You might as well quit. You're not going to beat me. I've got some in reserve, and you just keep. You can hammer all you want to, but I'm going to beat you. 
Clear by seven means you have a seven car length lead and opening it up. And, it, and, and Jeff Gordon sitting there thinking, well, I don't want to make a mistake. I am running second. So if Matt's that much better than I am, or if he's going to drive off and leave me, I might as well cool my jets. And that, la that lead is now up to eight tenths of a second. Is Jeff Gordon cooling his tires and waiting a bit? There's 15 laps to go. There's still plenty of time. Well, that's a sly old fox, you know. You'll kind of fall back off a guy and make him think, okay, he got me beaten, I give. And then all of a sudden you turn on the afterburner. There'll be a 14 to go when you get here. And you just wonder at that run he was making a few laps ago if maybe he overheated that right front tire and now he's having to cool it a little bit. That may bit. be all he has. And the reason I said you're probably right, Larry, watch him in one and two. Jeff Gordon seems to be shot, sliding up the hill in one and two. But as we've seen in each of these long green flag runs, the longer we run, the better Jeff Gordon's car gets relative to the field. But he's much higher in this turn than he has been. Okay. Uh, looks like the car, now you see him wiggle off of that turn. I believe Jeff has maybe used his stuff up, but I think he's got a run left in him. When I think there's about five or six to go, he's going to give it all he's got. Well, and he has nothing to lose because he has a four-second lead over third-place Kyle Busch in the 18. Might as well make a run for it. He's not worried about protecting right now. This is great racing, though. This is two really great drivers, and both of them need a win. Of course, Matt's already got his. Jeff needs his worse. But neither one of them, they're waiting for the other one to make a mistake. And it's very rarely either the one of them makes a mistake. These two guys are probably the two drivers of all the ones in the field that are mistake-free most of the time. Boy, Matt got a big push up off of two that time. But Jeff Gordon closed in by two tenths. Yeah, well, I think Matt was yep. really sliding up the hill coming out of the turn that time. Matt Kenseth has been described as robotic. In yeah. fact, Sprint did a commercial where they took one broken Matt Kenseth robot away and brought in another one to finish the commercial as uh, Greg Biffle makes the run for seventh I on Jimmy it. Johnson. And Matt kind of laughs that off. He says, yeah, I'm not an emotional guy. I, I don't show a lot of emotion except for last Sunday. I never saw a robot cry. That's right. <laughs> and he did after winning the 500. Hey, man, go get him. But just think about Greg Biffle as he just dr drove by Jimmy Johnson in that 48. He's still trying to overcome the mistake he made overshooting his pit stop sign a while ago. I think Jeff Gordon's used his tires up, Larry. I tell you why, I've seen him wiggle really hard a couple of times the last lap or two. Like when he gets back in the gas, he doesn't have any right front tire left. Thing is pushing loose. And the thing about Matt Kenseth, as long as is Mike Kalinoff is spotter, or he can look at that mirror and see the 24 fading, then he can kind of run his pace. He don't have to overextend that 17 car. 11 laps Eight. to go. He's a flat. Point eight up. 41.8 seconds for Kenseth. A flat. 42 seconds flat for Jeff Gordon. See how high Gordon gets really. That's just higher off of that turn and he's been now he's going to pick up some speed out of there but the, the last couple of times he's wiggled out of there when he's gotten that high you know, look, go here. look back at 2008 even though the 24 car went winless you could tell in those 10 chase races that those guys were beginning to figure this new car out they had some great runs uh, some great finishes and i think they're starting 2009 on that momentum they built in those 10 chase races matt, less, matt lost a little time off of four that time and they're just trading. I mean, one lap, it's uh, Kent's is a little quicker. The next lap, Gordon's a little quicker. 